if you actually like look up at the sky, you see the clouds just kind of like move along. You know, the sun shines, the sun disappears, the sun rises, the sun falls. Birds make them noises. The rivers kind of move. All this stuff just happens. All this stuff that keeps us alive, you know, the breathing that just happens, the, the sleep that just happens, the eating that just happens, the digestion that just happens. All this stuff that is entirely beyond our perceivable control just happens. We are so small. We are so, so incredibly small and so powerless. And we find that idea utterly terrifying and we resist it and we try to regain any sense of control and we try to manipulate the world into how we want it to look. But the more we try and grapple with that, the more we try and change and bend and mould everything into how we want it to be, the less life is how we actually want it to be. Because that continuous chase, that continuous you know, reliance on the need of everything being different continuously, constantly creates a subtle sense or even a really great sense of unease and the constant chasing, the constant waiting and hoping and praying on the future being better or on the finally when this happens then I'll be able to relax or be happy or whatever it is, it's a trap because really no matter our external environment, if we can't find any state of contentment or restful space within, we're never gonna get there. You know, there's a reason why when you feel content or when you feel utterly just like, oh, nothing right now needs to change, there's a reason why when we leave that place that we're trying to get back there. And there's a reason why when we are there, we're not trying to get anywhere because that's where our home is, that's where we rest, that's where and who we are. The problem is, is that it's so normal, it's so blissfully ignored. It's so normal to just get on that wheel of hamstering and just chase things and eventually probably have a midlife crisis, but maybe you don't vocalise it. Maybe you just kind of internalize it and then you die. What's the point in life if we're not actually here? Like right now, like in the moments that even aren't of them peak experiences of them kind of euphoric, you know, sun setting or party or connection with people or festival or whatever it is. That can't be forever. And it's not forever. It stops, it starts, it ends. Life can't just be about waiting for the moments to happen. Because even when they're happening, you're not really there. You know, even when they're happening, we're actually somewhere else mentally. Perhaps we're fearful of it ending. Perhaps we're thinking about work. Perhaps we're thinking about that conversation we've had. We're never actually taught. We're never actually given a tool. We're never actually given a, a nice gentle holding of a hand to teach us how to actually be here. What's the point of it? Of anything? If we're waiting for it to end so we can finally be somewhere else. Held it loosely, but this fucking time, I'll admit. Okay, so I get a job, 
and then I go to work, okay? No, sorry, I get a degree, and then I get a job, and then I work a lot, and then I like live for the weekends because that's what you do, but then the weekends are over. And I used to have this thing of like, I kind of actually hated having fun. I kind of hated going to parties. I kind of hated them kind of high end peak moments of people or experiences or just, you know, where life is just like, oh, this is amazing. Because there was a come down with that. There was a, there was a come down in the sense of like, there comes a point where that state doesn't continue and where that state, you know, has to end. And almost like, I, I couldn't face it. That you can't feel like that high end happiness all the time, you know? And I kind of th I thought that's what life was. And I thought that's what you had to chase. I thought you had to chase finding the means, finding the perfect circumstances, creating the perfect life for yourself where you do have that experience all the time, where you do have that feeling of just euphoric joy, exciting, like, wow, you know? But that search in itself is like, is crippling. A lot of times running can be used, and even the outdoors, is escapism and that's definitely how I got into it um, and I kind of saw you know running in beautiful places is a great opportunity to have some headspace and to think and to figure things out um, to kind of be in here when really it's not like that anymore and it hasn't been for the last maybe a year and the last year is also when I've entirely found my my love for this thing um, because yeah I don't I don't do this because I want to escape this you know I don't want to run far just so I can get to the end and just so it can finally be over. To me, this is a way to learn how to be here now, you know? Often we want to take away from any discomfort we feel feelings, thoughts, sensations, and we do that by distraction, which can be via thinking. It can also be via immersement, immersement? immersion in our surroundings, but rarely when we immerse ourselves in our surroundings are we actually there with them without some kind of background thinking going on. And yeah, what's the point in doing this? You're not actually here for me anyway. There is no point. I think the sooner you want it to end, the sooner you want to get to the end. The harder it is, mostly. And secondly, you gain very little enjoyment and connection with what you're actually doing. That rushing, that urgency creates a desire for it to be over, which makes right now not enough, not tolerable, when really there's nothing wrong right now. Right here, right now. Thinking is all exhausting. That distraction we do to almost, okay, yeah, little legs do their thing, and I'll try and distract myself from what I'm doing by thinking about something or figuring something out. It's a limited way of operating, and 
I only know and feel that because that's how I've always operated and it feels productive and practical but it's tiring and exhausting so how does one do that <laughs> is the question of probably all of humanity you know how do we get out of that state how do we actually just be here now how do we How do we stop getting so lost in our own pain? You know, be that minute acute pain, such as, you know, right now, I ran 20 miles yesterday up these giant fucking hills. Now I'm doing 10, 12 miles again today. My legs kind of hurt a bit. There's a lingeringness of tiredness. If I can get lost in that, I can make it a story. I can focus on them thoughts. I can grow them. I can, you know, do a lot of things with it. Or every time I notice that I'm doing that, every time I notice I'm thinking about it, every time I notice that I'm focusing on it, I can just come back to where my feet are. I can be here. And suddenly all of the suffering of that fatigue and pain and story vanishes. The sensation's still there, sure, but it's, it's not as heavy. I'm not trying to solve humanity in this video because I've not, <laughs> don't have the answer to life, unfortunately. But what I am going to do is share nothing but my own experience. Otherwise, it's kind of purposeless. jelly beans.
you see getting into ultra running and that state of needing to be okay with the discomfort what that like allowed me to experience was this experience I could never ex you know describe other than we all have them their peak experiences but you know I remember significantly this moment of like my first ever run like in mountains you know and I was running for like two hours which to me was like insane and I remember getting back to my car because I'd finished and I was like whoa it, it was almost like I had been like unplugged from some kind of thing that was constantly just here and just driving me and you know all these things you have to do you have to be all these conversations you need to analyze you need to think of you need to the person you want to become the what's the meaning of life what we're going to do with my life uh, blah you know feelings emotions thoughts intensity all of this that kind of just ca we carry with us most if not all of the time blame responsibility pointing the finger I remember just this moment of like, whoa, <laughs> like where have I been? It was like somebody had unplugged me, me. Um, and so I sought out that experience more and more. I wanted to explore that further. I wanted to figure out and understand what on earth is that? And it happened every weekend. I'd go and run on Saturday for many hours, you know, silence, just to the sound of the birds, the mountains, the air. I'd have them experiences of discomfort, of I can't do this, of projecting to the future, of all of that. And I noticed that whenever I was thinking, whenever I was figuring out, whenever I was analysing, whenever I was just thinking about what I'm going to do later, whenever I was hyper-focused on a sensation or a feeling or a level of discomfort, it became hard. It didn't become smooth, there was no flow, it was a struggle. But when I stop that, when I just let everything be, when I let the sensations be, when I let the thoughts be, when I let everything as it just is, just be, and me do absolutely nothing, it happened. That same experience, that same sense. And so I kept searching. What that led to was a frustration that, ah, oh, none of my life is like this. I want more of that. I want absolutely more of whatever on earth that is. And with that came intense frustration because there was a contrast between this ease, this sense of not needing to like manage myself, manage other people, manage the world. I could just be and I could just relax and I could just rest. There was this, there was that state over here. And then there was over here, there was this forceful, effortful, exhausting life and I craved this and so I sought it out from running and more running and more running and more running and then the outdoors and then all of that and the contrast became more and more stark and the question kept rising in me which was surely this can't be it you know I, it can't just be I'm waiting for these experiences where I'm running where I'm away from everything where I can just fully just relax I can't live like that, you know? Again, anywhere but here. <laughs> but what I soon realized was that it was actually nothing to do with the running. It was actually nothing to do with the mountains. It was actually nothing to do with anything that was occurring. <laughs> The things outside, the things I was doing, were a stepping stone to allow me to be into that flow, to fully rest into now. But I realised that that state, that experience that I felt so relaxed in, that I wanted my entire life to be in, wasn't to do with the euphoric feeling of running 25 miles or, you know, conquering some height exposure that I was scared of or, you know. It wasn't to do with being away from life, it wasn't to do with aloneness wasn't to do with solitude, it wasn't to do with any of that. It was to do with the fact that I just wasn't thinking about anything. It was to do with the fact that I wasn't trying to manage myself, it was to do with the fact that I wasn't trying to control my emotions, it was to do with the fact that I wasn't trying to control 
people around me, other people's emotions, my life, everything that I would always have tried to just stay in control of everything on top of everything and try and force and mould my, my life to be how I think it should be. The difference was just that I wasn't thinking and I wasn't perpetually exhausting myself from trying always. And I soon realised that 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 isn't solely there for running. And soon the dependency and the, the, the need to go and have that time for me on a Saturday running in the mountains was cut. I love it. I still do it all the time and it's my favourite thing ever to do. But that reliance for that to make me happy was gone because what I was actually craving was just presence. It was just to be here now. It was just to be aware of the fact that there is nothing to do. There is nowhere to go. There is nothing to solve. And the excitement and the continuous curiosity as to how I can make that now, how I can make that now wherever I am, even when I'm not running, you know? That, to me, that's the point, that's the meaning of life, is to be here now, you know? Because f at first, me running was escapism. It was me, you know, it, it's like this constant paradox of, we always try and escape the reality of where we are, you know? When we're at work, we're thinking about the things we're gonna do at the weekend. When we're at the weekend, we're thinking about the things we're gonna do at work. We use running, we use exercise often as a form of escapism. Let's say running, I'm escaping the reality of, of, of my life. And then when I'm running, I'm, I'm trying to distract myself from the running so that running isn't hard. And it's this constant state of distraction. And we wonder why we then go to bed terrified of what's gonna bring up in our minds because we don't spend any moment aware of what's actually here and what's there. And running away is never the answer. But it does serve a place and a time, I think, to recognise what's real and what's true. And to me, getting into running was that, it was bridging that gap. And to me, now, running is even better. It's even more exciting, it's even more thrilling because it's further of an opportunity to just discover where am I holding on to something? Where am I making this hard? You know, I'm running 110k in three weeks time. A lot of it's going to be dark. It's probably going to be awful weather. I'm probably going to be very tired. And it will be very, 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 very hard if I think about it. And if I start thinking about anything. Short term, there's a momentary relief release, relief, short term is a momentary help that you get from distracting yourself from thinking, take you away from the distract, the, the pain, take you away from the sensations, take you away from the fact that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting and I've got another 40 miles to run. But that thinking will end and then you're back here. Escapism isn't the answer for me. Distraction isn't the answer for me. The more I distract, the more I escape, the more I have to do that. And that scares me. So I don't. Well, actually, I still do. Unconsciously. And then when I notice, if I feel courageous enough, then I stop. We take things so seriously, <laughs> you know, like sometimes when you just, I don't know, for me, if I, you know, when I'm running in beautiful places or wherever I am and there's like a, a sunrise or you can see so far or there's just a strong sense of like, like we're so tiny 
were so, 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 so tiny and there is such a greater force at play, there is such a greater movement occurring and we're so in our little tiny brains trying to make everything how it should be, trying to make everything right, trying to be the best person, trying to thrive, trying to fit into all these boxes that we believe we should fit into. And when you really kind of zoom out of it all, we're all just these small little animals that wear weird coloured clothes that try and act like we know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> and for me there's such liberation in that because it, it removes any walls I tend to put up sometimes, it removes any sense of fear about people, about, you know, we really have nothing to prove, we really have nothing to prove. And I think if we could all just laugh a little bit more. Yeah, I've entirely run out of words, probably because I've been speaking way too much and probably because I look like an ice cream. Um, I feel resistance to making these videos though because I don't want to come. I don't want to try and I don't want it to be interpreted as if I'm coming across or I'm trying to come across as, as an authority figure on you know whatever because oh, that is the saddest moment of human life when you snuggle next to your dog and then they leave you to go and sit on the other sofa. I did she broken my neck to sit here so I could cut. Kind of, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think I was saying is that, yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to come across as like I have any answer. I don't think there are any answers. I don't think there are any questions, actually. Well, <laughs> I think there are a lot of questions, actually. I always have a lot of questions. But a fun fact. Did you know that rainbows don't exist without an observer? Isn't that the coolest fact ever? Doesn't it make you ponder things?